Hello my fellow colorist and mixed media artists. Welcome back to my channel. I am Amanda here for Mandy's Art and I'm so excited to welcome you back to part number three for our Fragile World color and chat. I hope you have your favorite drink as I have my coffee. I have my pencils all ready to go. Let's open up to the page that we are working on, which is this one. So, I first off want to say how appreciative and excited I am for all of the brand new subscribers that recently subscribed within the, the last month here. I can't say enough how thankful I am for you guys and for the support and love that you are showing to the channel by watching my videos. I hope to make more interesting content for you that you would uh, to enjoy watching and stick around and continue to watch all the videos. I can't wait to chat with you all in the comments after this video is up and posted on YouTube even further and answer all your questions so anyways so we're gonna work on getting some of this other greenage done and the tree uh, stump, uh, branch here and some of this other and we're gonna finish finish that up while we're working on things so I'm going to bring it in a little bit so we can kind of you can kind of see I'm doing in what section so we're gonna we're gonna tackle this tree here um, one thing I'm gonna be working on is getting color cards so you know exactly what color combo I'm using so I don't have to continue to show the pencils to um, the camera because I'm constantly having a hard time getting them to view right for you um, so, but I'm going to just tell you what I've got. So I've got um, Dungeon from the Dragon Set of Black Widow. So that's DG145. And I also have Castle, which is DG138. And I have Cardboard, which is DG146. This is my own combo. The other combos that I'm going to be using in the video where I got them all from watching Pamela's Passion for Pencils. She uh, did Black Widow color com con <laughs> I can't talk today. Color combinations um, with the 180 set and she's got like three videos out with combos. Um, so if you are interested in that, I would definitely go check it out and show her channel some support and love. I know that she would gladly appreciate that. And I'll leave my color combos down in the description too for today since I don't have the color cards along with a link to Pamela's channel. So I hope you guys are having a great week. I know I am. I'm going to start off this week was, you know, a little rough, but I'm finally, you know, getting on my feet, working in my art studio, and create, getting all the videos ready to create, and writing, doing research for what kind of content to create, because sometimes it can be, um, a never-ending battle of making sure you are following what your audience wants to see and how to keep them engaged in your content. So I've been doing a lot of that stuff, especially since I'm working on building this channel more. Um, I've been testing out um, for the mixed media side of things, which I don't have a lot of videos up, but I've been testing out a few product uh, projects 
like uh, jelly printing collage papers um, for a, a future video. So I was kind of getting my feet wet with my jelly print, uh, print. And I did make some really awesome jelly prints. Made a big hot mess in the studio. But I, I made some cool ones to help me process um, my cousin's birthday. That was two weeks ago. My cousin that passed away this summer. Um, so I made some uh, very intuitive pieces on the jelly print that I hope to, like I said, soon share with you guys and get that filmed. I'm still in the developing stages of and gathering a few extra supplies that is going to be coming in the hall uh, for the jelly print uh, press and I hope to, like I said, after I get those things, they're on their way, um, work on getting that filmed for the channel. The other project that I'm working on is uh, for the mixed media side is my how to draw series as I learn how to draw better. Um, I've got a drawing that I'm working on of an elephant in simple shapes and stuff that I am hoping to film that video here sometime this week as I work on practicing um, getting that drawing to look great and how to film that. Um, if anybody's got any suggestions on filming any other creator of what you would like to see, I um, don't have the option of video editing where I could do a voiceover or speed the process up a little bit. Um, it would definitely be real time. <laughs> so I am open to some suggestions. I just don't have the capability to video edit yet because um, my computer's not fast enough. So all of my videos are filmed in kind of one take or two sometimes because of that. I don't have the option of cutting things out yet. That's one of my goals for the channel is to work on saving for a better computer so I can edit because I want the videos to improve and I want to keep audience but you know for the time being I am blessed with what I the setup I have so and I'm thankful for it Um, let's see, what else do I have for channel news? For the coloring side, right now we are, I'm working on uh, the new, well it's a two, two month long hashtag called Crazy Kirby-a-thon, hence why I'm doing a Kirby book. Um, that is through Debbie's channel of Color Me Stress Free. Um, I d I've already done one page for it, and you saw that in my last video of the outlets, which I was so excited that my picture ended up being featured in her the first round of um, videos of showing them off, all the Kirby pictures that other people have done. Um, I was very thankful for her friendship on YouTube, um, even though that we are thousands of miles away. So, and she is such a sweet lady and has amazing content on her channel and does amazing things in her coloring books with watercolor that I'm too chicken to try because I don't want to wreck my coloring books um, because it's not watercolor paper. But, you know, maybe. Just maybe I'm, I'll try to start venturing out a little bit. Um, all of her watercolor galaxies are very 
um, inspiring to me. That's something that I want to learn how to do when I get into the watercolor medium. Um, I'm still working on collecting watercolor supplies and paper and good brushes because uh, brushes can get quite expensive. So, um, some exciting news. Uh, I got to explore a new art store in St. Paul. Um, Minnesota, because I'm close to Minnesota, um, called Wet Paint. And boy, was I like a little girl. I was like a little girl in a candy shop, just going over and exploring and looking at all the um, stuff that they had. And the best part was they were having a month long pencil sale for 15% off on open stock and all of their sets. So I was excited to hear about that because I was in the market for a couple open stock um, color, Derwent Colorsoft pencils that I used up from the last page and I had a couple pencils that were had some issues when they sharpened so I wanted to um, get those replaced, which is one reason why I went with the color soft since I'm not a big fan of Prismacolor Premier. Wonderful color selection. I just wish they were a little harder of a wax, like Black Widows and Color Soft. Um, because I had lots of issues with them breaking on me which is why I don't use them as much at all. So, um, I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. So basically, um, just to kind of take a quick little side trip down the rabbit hole, for what I'm doing in my, if you can't quite see what I'm doing, when my hands in the way is where Kirby's got all these dark shadows with his lines through um, a hatching, you know, cross hatching. I'm taking my darkest color of the three color combo and I am putting them in those areas for my shadows. So, but back to my adventure to the art store. So, while I was in there, because of the pencil sale, I picked up three uh, Faber-Castell polychromos that I want to try out before I take the leap and invest in the full set, which is quite pricey. <clears throat> and I also picked up two Stabilo All pencils really cheap for my mixed media stuff, and you'll see them all in the haul. And um, I also picked up my uh, couple color softs and what else? That was it. Oh, and then I also found out that they offer classes there at the art store, which is really cool. And one of the classes that I signed up for that was free was in intuitive journaling where it meets every third Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. I don't have the paperwork. And since I love mixed media and stuff, I thought what a perfect way of meeting other mixed media artists and getting more inspiration and just talking about art, which I'm so excited. And I also looked into some of their other classes, which were, you know, reasonably price for instruction. The nice thing is is they also had hybrid so they have Zoom and in person and since I'm in about an hour and a half away from the art store and I'm in a rural area in northern Wisconsin 
which we have limited resources for shops and classes like that if you want to enhance your skills. And so, in a way, COVID has been kind of a blessing that a lot of people are are offering the virtual. It's been a blessing to me because it helps keep me connected to the art community. And so I was excited about that, which I am going to look into taking some of the classes because I miss the classroom setting from when I was taking art lessons from my former art teacher before they moved over to West St. Paul. And I, I just miss the sense of community since a lot of us are now isolated because of COVID. And I wanna kinda of get back out into the community and not feel so kind of isolated and alone. Um, of course, I don't mind being a hermit because it's winter right now. I usually am a hermit in the winter, but, <laughs> cause it's just too dang cold. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to be a Karen about that, but it's just the nature of the beast of living up here in northern Wisconsin. It's just really cold. Beautiful area, but it's just cold. Can't really say much more about that. Mm. Excuse me. My mouth was getting a little dry while I was talking to y'all. Oh man, I can tell my mom's been here. <laughs> I'm starting to say y'all when I... <laughs> she, uh, my mom, who watches my channel, um, is down in Tennessee, so, and she was just up here for a visit to see all of us kids and celebrate my brother my brother and my nephew's birthdays and she has that it's like a combo because she's lived up here in the midwest and now she's down in tennessee her accent you can still hear in the midwestern wisconsin accent but you she's got this southern draw kind of added into it instead of her original midwestern accent so yeah. So she tends to say y'all quite a bit and stuff. So it does rub off on you when she's around. It's hard to say. But my mom's a sweetheart. So and that visit was really a really good one I, f I had with her. So I miss her because she's so far away all the time and uh, so yeah um and let's see what other exciting things did I do this week oh my other part of my adventure now that I'm thinking about it and talking about it I went to a Goodwill store that's close off of close to my sister's house where I like to um, go quite frequently to pick up uh, photo reference books of like animals, um, birds, wolves, uh, drawing books or finding um, stuff for references because as an artist, I know that my phone can become a big distraction. I'll start looking for uh, supplies on Amazon and then look up and it's like three hours later and I don't get to what I was meant to do, like drawing or coloring or working on my project or whatever I want to create. So I went there um, to see if I could find um, any more coloring books or uh, along with photo reference, which I scored big time for that. And I don't know if you guys want to see that all in the haul video, but it, I can show that too. I just won't do full kind of flips of these books because I don't know if some of them are still in print or you can get them. Um, 
but we will, I will try to. Um, that will be one of the next videos probably I film here in the next couple days. So, but what I scored on was a book that was published by Circus World Museum back in 1980 or 1998 about the circus history in Wisconsin and about the Ringling Brothers and it was so cool to get it which I bought it um, because Baraboo is my hometown and I was excited to get something that was vintage like that which had a lot of all full of all the circus history and then when I opened it up, which this is like my my favorite thing about it, was when I opened it up, there were two vintage postcards of circus wagons in there, which I'm a big, I love collecting postcards because I've always been fascinated by travel and going different places in the world. And I also love receiving them from friends, you know, just... So, it, I was surprised by that, and I'm, like, excited, too, because I get to add those now into my collection and stuff, and it's the best part. It was from my hometown. So, yeah. And I hope to actually use those postcards too, to um, uh, as drawing references too. Sorry, my brain was just <laughs> paused and on what I was thinking there for a moment because I'm getting relaxed coloring. Don't worry, the colors look weird to just being laid down. This is just only the first layer. We're in the messy stage. It will look pretty after I blend it all together and with the gold in there, so. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, what else was that's been interesting about my week. Um, to be honest with you guys, it's hard to come up with things to talk about or topics to talk about in these color and chats because I feel like my life is a little boring because I'm not working and I'm not volunteering anywhere um, because of COVID and just taking a mental break for myself from the hustle and bustle of trying to volunteer on a regular basis. Um, it's been a little bit difficult. For me so I mean I'm like I said I'm running out of things to talk about because usually my days are the same I get up at a you know mid-morning and have my coffee and stuff like that and then I get ready for the day do some chores and hang out with my studio buddy Toby over here Actually, he's sleeping on my bed behind me as I'm filming all of this. So, yeah. Um, make dinner. Go check mail. Go visit my neighbor. Go check on my neighbor. <laughs> I do that every day, so it's like, uh, what do I say about all that? 
I mean, it's not a bad thing. I'm just saying it's not really interesting content. Um, it's actually fluff. <laughs> so, yeah. Like I said, I'm just not really sure what to talk about sometimes. Um, in these videos. This is a learning process for me too of what to film, what your audience wants to see. Um, are you going to be comfortable talking to, to the camera? Which I'm not, I, I've learned in the beginning, I'm not really that comfortable talking in front of a camera. I just get really self-conscious and nervous. Um, and then I have to like teach myself how to relax. Um, so that's usually lots of different takes for that to actually get right. So. So this is my mid-tone color that I'm kind of laying down and um, so these other like semi-shaded spots that aren't really like kind of strong or thick lines here so I'm just it doesn't look pretty right now if you can see what I'm doing here so I'll kind of get myself out of the way it doesn't look pretty but once I get in there with my Derwent blender um, and my burnisher and get all the colors kind of combining together it's gonna look really cool Excuse me. Boy, that coffee tastes so good. Not as good as a coffee shop coffee, but it's, it will do. Since I've been putting all my extra money that I would normally go to a coffee shop into my art supply budget, um, I've actually have started to teach myself how to make some of the drinks that I enjoy at the coffee shop here at home to save some money because art supplies are not cheap and I definitely would prefer art supplies than spending seven dollars on a cup of coffee right now since since I am learning how to manage my money a little bit better and making healthier choices for myself and what's important for me. So, um, uh, let's see. I am enjoying watching a few new shows like The Gilded Age on HBO Plus about old New York and New York in the 1800s. I'm excited because Outlander is going to be starting back up here tomorrow. Um, definitely, definitely excited for that. And When Calls the Heart is tomorrow too. So there's a couple of some of my favorite shows I like to watch during the spring. Um, so yeah. What are you guys watching? Leave me a comment down below. And if you've got suggestions for another cool show to check out, uh, definitely put that down in the comments. Um, let's see. What else is interesting <laughs> in my world? <sighs> well, I am definitely uh, looking, like I said, to branch out into some 
No, we won't go there. I already talked about it. My brain is all over, guys. I think I'm just going to continue coloring. Hopefully. We can... Liking that. Can't wait to see it blended. Now I'm taking this cardboard color and I'm putting it, I'm kind of merging it with the mid tone a little bit. And these really white areas that you see that he doesn't have a lot of, um, a lot of the, like this here, which is considered his hatching and shading here. Um, that's where I would, because this is lighter than like, let's say down here where he's got it really dark and where I, I kind of filled it in with the darkest of my grays is what I've done here with this. So now I'm putting this lighter tone in these solid white areas as highlights. And then the areas where the mid-tone kind of meets with these, I'm pulling the color down into the mid-tone a little bit um, to kind of blend with the mid-tone and make the transition a little bit smoother. When I go to like blend and burnish this, the, they, the highlight color will like fill in and then I will also add more of the mid-tone I mean I'm just laying down like the first layers here and I'll add more of the highlight Hopefully we can get this piece done in this video. If not, you know, we can always film another segment. But I was trying to finish this page up. Let's go back at that mid-tone here a little bit. And darken a little bit more and add another layer to it. because there's definitely spots of the tooth of the paper that 
I did not get enough pigment in. Let's see here. Now yeah, that's starting to look better with the added. Should we blend a little bit? Let's see what we're coming up with. Now, don't worry, just because you blended it out doesn't mean that you can't go back and do more layers. Sometimes it's recommended to go back and do more layers to see if you've laid enough pigment down and then blend again to get the desired look that you're looking for out of your color combo that you're using. So. I've definitely done that before. Uh, I blended and didn't like how much pigment I had down or didn't like that it didn't transition smoothly. So I would go back and add more layers and then blend it again and blend it again until I was satisfied with what I, the end results of what I was looking for. So. That's looking pretty good. Interesting effect that we're getting with that cardboard color. I'm liking that. Okay. I'll kind of move on to the next section here. know how long this video is going to be so what I am going to do for today is kind of end it here and then finish the rest of this off camera here and then uh, when we come back to the next video we'll work on the next step for this um, page I hope that you guys have a lovely afternoon and have a great time spending with family and just chilling out. Um, and I will see you next time on the next video. Bye, guys.
see you, see you soon. And remember that you are loved and supported and cared for by me. And I look forward to catching you on the next video. Bye.